I'm saying this because if you read the questions, the way the questions are framed in this area, it appears that academically we've not settled on which ones are the core or which ones are the main. So I'm going to take you through the fiscal regimes. We've already done most of them, but we just want to put them in the right perspective, especially how the exams come. You see, my one major thing is that Whereas we are learning to practice as tax consultants, we must pass first. Okay, if you don't pass, you cannot practice as a tax consultant. So exams focus is very, very key. Now, questions that come in this form look some way. In, at some point, we'll say it, they are two main concepts. In another time, we'll say there are three main. In another time, we'll say there are four main. In another time, we say one main. Don't for, don't confuse about the one main, two main, three main, four main. Okay. So in this lesson, we want to look at the, the petroleum fiscal regimes and how Ghana's fiscal regime looks like. Okay. And some, some summary, just like 52 pages. I may not be able to finish. Okay. But let's look at a typical question, the way this area comes. 2012, August, they said, Indonesia, can you all see my screen, please? Okay. Yeah, you can see it. Okay. It says Indonesia was the first country to sign a, revo a revolutionary fiscal petroleum contractual agreement in 1966 to bring the worldwide fiscal petroleum contractual framework to two yes. main classification cla uh, classified regimes. See, two main. So in this question, we are saying two main. Identify these two fiscal petroleum regimes and explain the main features of each of them. Then in 2014, we asked another question. There are many contractual structures that countries use to grant exploration and production rights to oil and gas companies. But there are three main. Have you seen it? So whereas in 2012, we saw it as two main, in 2013, 2014, we are saying three main to as home, refer to as home government contracts or world physical systems. 
for oil and gas. Identify the three main contractual arrangements, explain their main features, and also specify the difference in their structure, if any. Yet still, 2016, we asked another question, the same area. Governments grant, sorry, countries grant exploration and production rights to oil and gas companies under various contractual arrangements. But there are four main, so still we are graduating. Hello. Yeah. You see, we are graduating small, small. Please don't get confused yeah. about whether four main or three main or two main. Okay. Um, when we start going through, you see that there are some ones, some which are popular. So in exams, me, I'll just write the popular ones and then I'll move on. Okay. Four main ones refer to as host government contracts or world fiscal assistance for oil and gas. Identify and explain the main features of the four main contractual arrangements. Specify and explain the contractual arrangements under which Ghana grants exploration and production rights to oil and gas. Then in August 2017, same year, we also asked the same question. It is the opinion of some people that production sharing contract is better than the royalty contractual arrangements under which Ghana grants exploration and production rights to oil and gas companies. Evaluate the above statement and state whether you agree with it or not and assign reasons. We didn't end there. In 2017, we also asked another question. Ghana's petroleum fiscal regime has been described as has been described in some form by some as a hybrid of royalty tax and production sharing contract. Do you agree with this description? If yes, explain. And if not, describe the fiscal regime of Ghana and explain. Then in 2018, we also asked another question. It is the opinion of some people that production sharing, and this is just a repeat of the last one, the last two. It is in the opinion of some people that production sharing contract is better than the royalty tax contract arrangements under the under which Ghana grants exploration and production rights to oil and gas companies. Evaluate the above statement and state whether you agree with it or not agree. So please, in exam, don't get confused. Just write the popular ones. Okay. Correct. Now, we say that these are the various petroleum contracts regime that we choose based on which we get our revenue. The first regime or the first contractual fiscal regime that is popular is a concession one. So we say we have given you a concession and mostly we hear that term in mining and minerals. Okay, you have been given a mining concession in the Tiwa forest. Okay, we have been given a mining concession in uh, uh, Obuasi, or you have been given a, a petroleum concession in the Volta Basin. So what is the concession? So concession is principally a contractual arrangement where the contractor owns the oil in the ground and government benefits comes in the form of royalty and taxes. So in the concession, you are give, we give you our natural resources, go and explore, and you only pay royalty and taxes to us. Is that okay? In fact, this one is the oldest. This one was the, first, the very first, and we even still find it in our mining arrangements where our miners go get them go and extract the mineral and then they only come and pay royalties and taxes so that is what we call the concession arrangements the second one that we'll come and look at the adva advantages and everything all the second one is a production sharing arrangement the PSA and just as the name implies produce and less share so the contractor extract the oil on behalf of the government and then he takes parts of the oil once it is out of the or out of the ground so you produce and then we share the oil produce and then we share the oil please look at the features in the end we'll come and look at how Ghana's own looks like for example whether Carlos, Carlos agreement or whether cosmos agreement is a production sharing or it's a concession or it's a hybrid we will come and conclude that Ghana's own is a hybrid because we have all from we have all forms of other revenue 
we have uh, additional participating, we have uh, additional oil entitlement, we have uh, which one again? The first one is what? Um, royalties. Yeah, yeah. good. Royalties. The first one Exactly. So the first one is royalties, which is a con which yeah. which mostly relates to concession. Then we come and yeah. also talk about additional participating interest, okay. additional oil entitlement, okay. additional interest. Okay. So they are a mixture of it. And then they also monitor cost oil. Come again. Exactly. So we will come and conclude that Ghana's own does not automatically depict a concession or production channel. It's a mixture and a, it's a hybrid. Okay. Now, the service contract is where the contractor receives a fee for a service. Mostly Dubai do does this. They are the Arabs. As for them, the machines, they have money. So they have their own thing. Then they, will, they pay you as, as a contractor Cutter. for extracting the oil. Then we have a joint venture. Again, here you are likely to see Ghana in there. Because Ghana, we have, we have set up the GMPC, which is a company. And GMPC can enter into a joint venture arrangement with another company. Okay? And you know, Ghana, we don't do it directly. We do it through GMPC. So we can also have a joint venture existing. So in the exams, we can ask you to comment on any of these ones. Please, is that okay? Yes, sir. Okay, so... Let's first talk about the concession, the advantages. And we said that this concession is very, very old. Those days, people had the resources, but they did not have the means to extract it. So what was happening was that they will see a contract, uh, uh, the oil companies will come, and then they'll give them the land, the concession to extract. So what they will only get is, the royalties and the tax. So the benefits to the government is that it is more straightforward. Okay, we get expertise who come and produce it. And government does not need to possess any special expertise. It is less complex. Just give the give the land to them. Let them do. They will bring their royal. It's like sand winning. In the villages where we had, if your if your your land is is sand for build for building when they take a uh, one track then they will come and pay 50 cities per track that is your royalties in the it, it normally happens in the mining sector so this concession but we can also have it in the oil and gas sector as well now uh, hello okay. hello so Yes, you want to ask a question? No. Okay. Okay. So the financial risk works with the contractor. We don't incur any risk. Understand? Huh. But what are the disadvantages? You see, because it is a royalty, they always want to be the royalties down. So the bidders try to be more cautious in their agreements. With the royalties, they wouldn't want to pay higher uh, royalties. Okay. Mm -hmm. Especially as it is when it is oil and gas, you never know how much oil is on the ground, or even if you know, right, to be an estimate. So under that circumstance, you are careful because if it is not enough to cover your cost. Everything that you have done is just going to be uh, payment to government. Is that okay? What about the PSA? So please, this time hey, we are we are behind time. Okay, don't worry. I'm sure we'll continue uh, next week. Thirty more. Yes, sir. Uh, if you read some of the past questions, you, you realize that instead of the mentioning of concession, they rather do it where artists like task regime. Yes. Is it okay to do that? Or yes. Way? Yes, it's the same. You see, the here in the concession, we are saying that what you get is just royalties and tax. 
okay you don't get anything you don't you don't even get the oil you don't get the mineral all you get is yours so we can call it royal this royalty stroke tax regime or the concession regime you don't you don't get confused about it okay the major thing is that you just have they say who has bought that uh daniel phillips daniel phillips the accession of minerals and that was the original book we were using before uh, Dominic Nav and Cook came to write something. Have you seen that book before? Hello. Have you seen that book before? Oh. That was a textbook we were using before. And that book is that book is very, very good. So right now, Dominic Nav and Cook came to summarize these things for us. So they have summarized it from those books, Daniel Phillips and Cook. But if you really want to understand how it originated, and that was the book no. we were using. I thought oh, that no. I thought some of you have bought it already. Anyway, so um, Derek, you won't be wrong eh, if you say royalties pro stroke um, this, this this thing regime. You won't be wrong, okay? And then, so the PSA was introduced by also Indonesia in 1966, and we are saying that. Um, you produce and then you get parts oh. of the oil. Okay. And the main advantage is that uh, the PSA puts on government premium on high professional negotiations. So you negotiate, but government must have access to technology before because you, if you don't have the technology and the expertise and the resources, they do rather want to do the royalty stroke tax regime and then when you get them when you give them the agreement or the concession they will only pay royalties and then leave you out okay mm -hmm. um, since my time is up but i'm trying to see what i can do okay, why is this thing why is my slide behaving like this I'll share this slide then. Then you start reading on it. Okay, so before we go to the, the other other ones, let's see how the global destiny is shifting before we consider the hybrid and then the seven other okay. So if you, before we consider the high the hybrid one, look at can you see my screen how we are shifting from concession? Nowadays, nobody is interested in concession anymore. Okay. So concession is concession is going away. Your line is breaking. So concession is moving away. Can I ask a question? Um, on the Position yourself a bit well. Hello? Okay. When you, when your line comes through, then you can ask. So yes, joint venture exists, but mostly now what we are seeing is a hybrid production sharing and then the service contract. The service contract is the the, the 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 pure service contract is what some rich countries are now doing, where they employ you to come and produce and then they just pay you. Okay. Now. We also have the hybrid, and this is where Ghana seems. So no fiscal, no such fiscal regime called hybrid exists, but it's a blend of all other features of the others, so that you can see that it is not one, but a, a combination of them. Derek, is your line clear now? Okay. So this is just some research that was done, PSA, we still have them in about 81 countries. This, these are all countries that produce oil. Okay, Namibia, Sierra Leone, Cote d'Ivoire, in minor quantities, they, they, in minor production. And they, they, you, you see PSA featuring in it. Europe, you go to the Middle East, all of them are using PSA. Okay. So, which one do you think Ghana's own will be?
Hello. Hello. Can you hear me? Am I online? Hey. Yes. Okay. All right. I'll share these slides with you. I think my time is up. So, so Ghana's fiscal regime has been described as what? As a blend. As a blend of all, all of them. If you read some documents like Dr. Mwakontofo, he thinks that Ghana's fiscal regime is a blend of a lot of them. So he described it as a hybrid. I don't know how far you agree with him. OK, because of the features that we have. And uh, Frida Quigrin also published a study, which she also said that, yes, Ghana's own is a hybrid. These are petroleum experts. But clearly, clearly there's, no there's no one fiscal regime that you can say it is. This is hybrid. So you are going to have royalties inside there. You are going to have state participation and a whole lot of them. So in Ghana, we have royalties. We have additional participating. And all of these things come together. And then we say it is a hybrid. Please, do you agree? Hello. Hi. OK. And, yeah. Yeah. I hope the Ghana one doesn't involve uh, the service one. Oh. No, Ghana, we've not got into a place where we are. We have a service contract. No, because but we don't have money. Yes, we don't. <laughs> we don't. We don't have money yet. So mostly, what we have done is that we have, we have, we have joined. We are using more of state participation. So at a point, you can see joint venture. OK, at a point two, even within the joint venture, we have used some nice ways of getting more money. Like we are saying that 15% or 10% should be free. That's what we call what? That is the, what name do we even give it to that one? Initial participation. Uh -huh, initial participation. Yeah. We don't pay for it. And then when you, when you also get part of, when you, when you discover oil, we, also, we can also acquire additional participating. Have you seen it? Yeah. And then even when you strike oil and you get it in beyond the same, some free money there, then we say, okay, we want additional oil yeah. entitlement. Yeah. And then even before you sign the agreement, we say we have something we call signature bonus. Yeah. So you put all of these things together, then aside that we still come and tax them at 35%. And even... Uh, the additional participating interest where we collect it in oil. Have you seen it? Okay, so Francis, if I can add this, eh? when mm -hmm. you when you look at the the two two zero four. Hey, Francois. It, it that, um, for this foreign entities to even participate, now talk. So I'm saying that the LI 2204 um, says that uh, when for a, a company to to engage in um, production of oil in the country, that's the um, oil producing companies, the IOCs, they need. Mm -hmm to form a joint venture and afford the local entity at least 5% participation. Exactly. Uh -huh. So you see, so we have joint venture from the beginning. Then you come, then we attack you with royalties with, and taxes. Then aside that, you give us free participation, 10% or 15%. Then aside that, we can even go ahead and get a bonus. Then we can also get so clearly it's like we are suffering the oil companies. 
Because if you put all of these things together, Ghana is getting a lot. <clears throat> that is why, if you look at our petroleum revenue management act, people are saying it is the best act we can ever have okay. to manage petroleum. Okay, so because of time, eh, we'll end here. We'll continue next week. Um, next week, uh, uh, I hope I'll have class in the in the early morning so that we can. But don't worry, as for well and guys here, these are theories. You are we have done most of the theories, especially the Petroleum Revenue Management Act. If you have if you have really read it and you have the past questions, I don't see why you can't guess your two written question already. And then one calculation done, making three questions. Then we are looking at redetermination and all this one, ring fencing, with which we have also done. Then we are trying to see if this fiscal regime can also come. When we finish. I think then we are left with just one mining question. And the five question is set for you. If you fail, then means that you just deviated. Small, maybe by that morning something happened or you know, it does happen in exams. Sit there and then something will flash your mind and that that why that happens. But we, we pray that it doesn't can happen. Can I call after the class? Yes, you can call me. So when we finish with the mining one, I bet you you should go through it. As for well, Langas, you should go through it. Thank you. Yeah, you should. You should because um, last two sittings or was it three sittings? One guy got he blew per ninety percent. If you are very diligent, you will get everything. Anyway, so let me close here and then in five minutes I'll set up the audit class because today there was a little mess up. So the audit will start in about five minutes time. So let's come back in five minutes. Okay. Thank you. So you can log off once I set up the audit class.